everyone. Uh, today I'm excited to have with us on the podcast Joel Bogas. Uh, Joel spent the majority of the 90s in radio and TV business. He currently hosts the Relaunch Show, which is number one uh, in podcast on iTunes. You can find more about his podcast and at, at his website, uh, relaunchshow.com, which is a really great place to go for resources of all kinds. And uh, also his uh, number one best-selling book, Finding Your Voice, was featured on TV nearly 50 times. And Joel's also uh, uh, posted, had done guest posts at Huffington Post and success.com. And so uh, he's just got a, a wealth of experience and uh, he is definitely a natural with broadcasting and he enjoys teaching podcast and radio show ho hosts on how to book great guests and how to have engaging interviews. Joel's vision by May 2017 after three years of the relaunch show is that he would have helped 200,000 listeners to learn to believe in themselves again. And so, Joel, I mean, that's amazing. Wow. Thanks for being here. Oh, Lorna, this is going to be so much fun. I am so excited. I've been looking forward to this interview. And, you know, I started in traditional radio. My gosh, it's been 25 years. And even though I have a lot of experience in, in being behind the mic and also in front of the camera as well, I still don't take these invitations for granted. And there's there's a lot of places that people could be right now, but they're they're listening to your show and me, I'm I'm grateful to have the opportunity to to be on. Oh, thanks so much, Joel. Uh, I've just I really appreciated your podcast. It just uh, it's so true that it's uh, hearing about how people have uh, you know, found the confidence to believe in themselves again, you know, after they've gone through a lot of hard stuff in their lives and just have made that transformation is just amazing. And that's why I love going back to your show over and over again. So I just appreciate that. Thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for listening and congratulations on your show too, Lorna. If, there, if there's one audience and group of people that I love speaking to, it's content creators. And that could be podcasters, that can be authors, that can, that can be bloggers, or people that just have a message, they have a voice somewhere inside themselves and they just feel compelled to share it. And, and I love working and just encouraging those uh, types of folks however I can. Oh, awesome. Well, if you don't mind, we just kind of get, get started. I just I had a few questions I just wanted to, to ask you if you're okay with that. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, Joel, I, I have, I've read your book, which is amazing, finding the, your book, Finding Your Voice. And I've heard you talk a little bit about your, about your own journey, uh, also on your relaunch podcast and in your book. And so would you share a little bit of your own story and maybe, you know, a little bit about your book? Sure. Yeah, I'd be delighted to, you know, Finding Your Voice. When I first decided to write the Finding Your Voice book, I actually... Well, you'll probably laugh at me, but I actually looked up the word voice in the dictionary just because I wanted to make sure that I was using the right words and I was um, for the message that I wanted to communicate. And one of the definitions that the dic dictionary gave said that voice is to give full expression to. And I thought about that for a minute, full expression. And I thought, that's it. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to provide a, a guidebook or a blueprint or some type of material that can really help people get in touch with the full, fully expressed version of themselves, who they are. Because I've, I believe for a long time that when we are fully expressed, that's when we can do the best work for ourselves and for everyone around us. And when you're fully expressed, when you are truly exercising in your voice, who benefits? Everyone. So th that that's kind of the genesis and the foundation of why I wanted to not just write the book, because that's just a byproduct of the message that mm -hmm. I wanted to, to communicate, mm -hmm. which is you know finding your voice, finding your true I expression. And you asked me a little bit about my story. I spent a long time trying to figure out how I was naturally um, to be expressed because I had a lot of um, 
challenges, a lot of uh, obstacles to overcome. Uh, at age five, I nearly lost my life. I uh, came out of a coma at age six and went to live with my mom for, for a while. Both my parents had been divorced before my accident, and so they were still struggling as kids. They were yeah. you know, 19 and 20. Actually, I don't remember exactly the ages, but it was still in their probably early 20s. And they were still tr- struggling with trying to, to figure out how to make it work. And my dad, with uh, his own uh, demons that he was wrestling with, my mom ended up uh, living with an abuser from the time I was six, six to 13. Uh, so I learned a lot of examples of what not to do yeah. and how not, not to treat women. And, you know, I could dramatize this and, and go really deep, but that's really really not the goal. I'm, I'm more interested in providing value for the, the listeners today. But a lot of struggles, as we all have, a, lo- a, lo- a lot of um, BS that I heard from other people that I started believing myself, mm-hmm. just like everyone else has, has to kind of wade through that at some level uh, in their life. But there came a point, Lorna, that I, I realized that I needed to express myself in, in the way that God has created me to be. Mm-hmm. And, and while I could take advice given to me by other people, some of it well-intentioned, some of it not so much, it was still up to me. What I wanted to take as truth and what I wanted to disregard. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's a lot of wisdom right there. Uh, wow. And that's just... Uh, you know, with, with all you've been through, Joel, like, uh, you know, how, how did you find your authentic voice through all those, you know, many people would say impossibilities, right? Like twists and turns and obstacles and struggles, you know, what, you know, how, how did you find your voice in that? And, and were there times when the challenges you faced seemed bigger than your ability to overcome them? Sure. I think something that, everyone can relate with is listening to the show today is to look back, to think back to some of the things that they've always uh, done kind of in an, I can't help it kind of way. And one of the things that I've always done is I've always been an encourager and a helper of, of people, helping them to sort through the clutter so that they could find a little bit of clarity, a little bit of confidence, and a little bit of direction in their life. And that could be in uh, in a hobby. That could be with maybe their studies. And later in life, maybe within their career. But, but it's always been that way for me. I can think back to when I was a high school student and how I would uh, teach little kids uh, karate. And how that was what I did, you know, I was teaching kids how to punch and kick and spin and all that. Those are the mechanics of what I was teaching. But what I was really teaching them, Lorna, is how to have confidence in themselves, how to how to set a goal and achieve it, how to believe in themselves. And then after high school, I went into college and I was a swimming instructor and while the mechanics of what I was teaching had changed from kicking and spinning and all that to all of a sudden proper uh, stroke execution, you know, how to go underwater, how to blow bubbles. And I was still teaching people the same inner qualities, confidence, uh, belief in yourself, things of that nature. Just the um, environment had changed from a, you know, karate room studio to a pool. And then later as an adult, a personal trainer, a counselor, and then now as a um, professional speaker, I'm still doing the same thing that I was doing at age 47 that I was doing way back when I was 16. I'm just doing it from the stage now. And also from, you know, the one-on-one coaching work that I do, helping people find clarity, confidence and, and direction within themselves so that they can make the difference that makes a difference to them. That is, you know, something that's so needed, Joel. So I appreciate all the work you're doing to help people to get there. That's awesome. So, you know, sort of, 
um, moving along in that direction. This is just a, a question that's kind of related to that. But how did, how did you discover a love for writing and podcasting? And then specifically, how did you come to realize that you loved, uh, you know, you know, helping people like beyond. So you would you would help them, you know, with karate and stuff. How, how did you realize that you loved actually helping people uh, find their authentic voice? And, and to relaunch their own lives. Sure. I think that's a good question. I think because it was such a challenge for me. And once I was able to take a hold of who I really was and my voice, not the voice that's come, that comes out of my mouth, but the voice that's stirred from the inside and comes out of my heart. Yeah. Once I understood the power of being able to not only recognize but harness it, like how, like how you would harness a horse, there's power there. Yeah. And w- once I discovered that for myself, it, it just, it was something that I had to help other people discover I- as well. I was basically the, the solution, the solution I found within myself, I wanted to provide that solution for other people. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, Thank you. So, so with, with all that you have, uh, you know, um, like, all the people that you've coached on finding your voice and just with all you've learned yourself, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you have so many amazing tips. Would, would you lay out, you know, some practical tips for people listening on how they can find their voice and to get in touch with who they really are? Sure, Lorna. I, I, thank you for asking me that. I think one of the things that we can all do today for ourselves uh, without having to enroll in a course, without having to read another book, or without having to invest any money is we can reach out to our top three, four or five uh, people in our circle that will tell us the truth. Mm -hmm. People that know us, like us, trust us, and that will tell us the truth and ask them what they see in us. You know, what do you hear me always talking about solving or being a part of or contributing to, you know, what kind of people am I attracted to? What kind of people do I attract? You know, what what have you always seen me do? And what happens in that process? And that's a that's a coaching exercise that I that I use with all my clients. What ends up happening is people will see things in us that we don't see for ourselves that we either don't see or that we haven't assigned value to. And I have a little questionnaire. It's a one-page questionnaire that I encourage uh, the folks that I'm working with to send to their top, you know, three, four, and five folks to get answers. I, I can share that with you if you'd like. Sure. And um, and the the responses that they get back from coworkers, from family, from friends, they're usually full of surprises, pleasant surprises, because folks will say when they're reading it or we're reading it together, they're like, wow, I didn't realize that that, that that was really anything. I figured, well, gosh, can't everybody do that kind of thing? They're, they're downplaying their strengths and we all, and we all do it. Yeah. But, but I think what we can do as content creators is that we can start reaching out to the people that'll be truthful to us to see what we really have to offer what we haven't noticed ourselves yet. And that's really powerful. Uh, Yeah. Like, um, because you uh, you never, you never really know, I guess, right. What, um, what people will actually, you know, respond to you with, it might just totally surprise you what they see in you. Right. Well, it'll, it'll definitely surprise you. It's surprised so many folks that I've uh, worked with because they, you know, they're so married to who they are they don't see it as doing anything special. Yeah. I can think of one uh, mom of two that I worked with. Her first name is Kim. And I had Kim do exactly that. And one of the things that she learned is that she had this ability to work with young moms and to help them solve real world questions that they had about their relationships and about their finances and we kind of explored through that as we kind of went through our discussions and our process. And she didn't really realize that she was doing anything special because, as she says, 
well, Joel, I'm just being me. This is, I'm just doing what I do. And I basically, well, not basically, but figuratively pointed the finger at her and said, exactly, you are being just you. And that's a good thing. Yeah. So let's figure, let's figure out, okay, how can we do that and and make turn it into a business if we want to, or yeah, a, a ministry if we, if we choose to, or into something that is even more worthwhile for you. And make a long story short, Lorna, Lorna, what she ended up doing is she ended up resigning from her job, and she started to, you know, look look at ways that she could use that strength that she had, the strength of helping younger moms sort through their their own mess to find answers to their own relationship and, and, and finance questions and to, you know, move forward in, in their marriage and with their family. And that is one thing that Kim discovered within herself. And, and that was a game changer for her. I mean, it changed everything. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. Wow. Uh, so, so, you know, you can often just from even from those answers from people that are kind of in your circle, you can start to perceive yourself and your value differently, which sometimes is all the maybe the, all the impetus someone needs, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's valid. And when, when folks are validated for something that, that usually adds layers and uh, of a clarity and strength to it yeah yeah no that's awesome uh so uh what would you say to people uh who are feeling like uh you know they have glimpses of their unique voice um but they are facing a lot of fears like maybe feeling fear of failure and you know not feeling good enough or like they don't have enough support to take those steps forward that's another great Really, we all need to to ensure whatever relaunch we're getting ready to embark on. Maybe that is a relaunch to a new bit. Maybe a relaunch into a, a new book or a new theme of books, a new genre. Or maybe been relaunching into a new relationship. But relaunches, we have to have three things. We have to have... We launch uh, resources, we have to have relaunch relationships, and we have to have relaunch um, routines. And quickly, I'll go through those. Is that okay? Oh, yes. No, that'd be great. Okay, fantastic. So your resources, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish in your business, in your career, in your spiritual walk, you have to have the best training available. Now, that could be training tools like books. That could be podcasts, like the one that you're listening to, or that could be some other type of a training. You've got to have the resources that are going to help you learn whatever it is that you need to learn as you move forward in, in, in some type of new endeavor. The more resources that you have, the more knowledge you have. The more knowledge you have, the less fear you have. And number two, you've got to have the right relationships, relaunch relationships. And think of it as finding five, maybe six people that you can link arms with that'll that'll have your back. You know, people that know you, like you, trust you, and want you to go far, want you to succeed. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, and and we we all know how important it is to have the right relationships in our lives, and we also know how destructive it can be if we don't have the right relationships in our lives. The thing is, it, it's up to us to make sure we've got the right players on the right team. Yeah. And while it's not always easy to switch players, sometimes it's the only thing that that you can do uh, for your your health, for your sanity, uh, for your uh, betterment. So relationships. And then, of course, no, uh, the third one is routines. You've got to have the right routines in place. Routines are things that you do over and over again that will either set you up for success or set you up for a destruction. 
routines to set you up for success might be, you know, getting up an hour early. So you can spend that time writing, meditating, praying, exercising, you know, whatever it is that you want to do over and over again. You make a routine out of it. Routines that become, that might be destructive are going to happy hour every day after work, not just on Friday, but also Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. You know, that's a routine, not a healthy one, but it's a routine. And your routines are what sets you up for failure or destruction. But guess what? The good news is we're responsible for the routines that we participate in for the most part. Yeah. So those three things right there, you line them up and, and the fear will go away. Yeah, that's as long, Yeah, thank you. That is, that's, that is really good. And I can see how, uh, you know, habits, routines uh, is something that, um, and, you know, having the right relationships, just all of that. I mean, that uh, is actually very powerful in a person's life, right? It affects what we do and how we perceive things, how we perceive the world around us and how we perceive ourselves, right? Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I I say something over and over again every day in my daily affirmations, and that is your self-image, the way you see yourself, influences your self-esteem. Your self-esteem is the way you feel about yourself. So if you see yourself as, as being uh, a person of character, a person that can make a difference in her life and also in the lives of their family. Well, you know what? That's going to affect, that's going to, I'm sorry, that's going to influence your self-esteem the way you feel about yourself. And your self-esteem, the way you feel about yourself, affects your actions. That's what you do. So if you have an elevated uh, self-image and also a healthy elevated uh, self-esteem level, well, your actions will follow suit. So your actions will be healthy. They'll be productive. They will be um, life-affirming. You know, actions that are non-life-affirming would be, okay, going back to happy happy hour. Yeah. Those are still, those are still actions. Yeah. But, and then your actions impact your results every single time. So if you're participating in good rituals or routines – that's going to give you good results every time. But if you are practicing, participating in more unhealthy routines or rituals, you know, having that extra drink, you know, having that extra piece of pie, well, guess what? The, the results are probably not going to be things that you are looking for, like a spare tire around your belly, yeah. um, you know, uh, a, a car accident, or even worse. And then your results drive your success. Your lack of, or your your um, abundant success, but you get to choose. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, no, that's true. So, would you would you say, Joel, then that um, you know, as people that are I am statements, like I am, if I if I say I am, you know, valuable to my family, if I or if I say I am, uh, you know, not valuable, do you? Would you would you say our I am statements are super important and and that would be like the starting point, sort of the starting point? I do them every single day. Yeah, I do affirmations every single day. Here's the thing with affirmations, Lauren, and I'm so glad that we're talking about this. You've you've got to find the the language and the words that work for you. Yeah. You know, and you just got to tweak and play with that. It's part of the the whole life process. You know, one. One thing doesn't necessarily work for the other person. Mm -hmm. So you've got to figure out what's going to work the best for you and incorporate that into your into your morning ritual, your morning routine. That's where that's where the routines start in the morning. And we all can relate with, you know, if you wake up in the morning and you you go through exactly what you have planned out, you know, you, you have the lunches prepared for the kids. You, you get them where they need to be on time. You, you make the phone calls, you, you send the email, everything goes in place in the morning while the rest of your day uh, 
stands a lot better chance of, of going in a better direction. But if if it's just chaos from the time the alarm goes off, well, we know how the end of the day is usually going to end up. Yeah. So I I, I, I believe in affirmations. I do them every single day. The um, the idea is just figure out what's going to work for you and figure out how many. I've got about 10 or 12, and I, and I add to those. It does uh, run around in our heads, right? Uh, we start to, if we say the negative about ourselves, we start to believe that. But if we start to say the positive, we believe that too. So it's, you know, whichever way you're going to go, right? <laughs> you, absolutely. Yeah, you, well, we're, we're all talking to ourselves, even if we don't know that we are. Yeah. You know, th there's always a conversation going on, yeah. but we get to choose which conversation uh, we're going to play over and over again. And it, it's going to take some work to change the conversation. No question about that. But we have we all have the power to do it. Yeah. Wow. That is super helpful. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Joel, that's just you have so many, uh, you know, gold nuggets. <laughs> I'll have to re-listen. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, you know, sort of head toward the end here. Um, would would you, uh, before we, you know, talk about new books and projects, but would you talk about um, uh, wh what would be your best piece of advice uh, to people, uh, you know, who are wanting to, you know, find their voice and, you know, get rid of things like what we were just kind of talking about, insecurity and... Um, you know, fear of failure and all that kind of thing that people that want to relaunch, but just aren't sh sure where to start, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, the very first thing I think that I would do is to, to understand what you don't want. Maybe, maybe that would help. Yeah. Maybe, maybe if, if, if folks have a little bit of a, a challenge, under, uh, knowing what they do want, maybe, maybe they can understand, take some time to understand what they don't want. Like, for instance, if someone's a smoker, well, I don't want to be a smoker anymore. Okay, well, that's one thing. So so what else? You know, well, I, I don't want this extra 20 pounds uh, around my, my belt line. Oh, okay, well, cool. That's So so what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And so forth and so on. Um, maybe that'll be helpful. Uh, the other way to look at that is knowing at least one thing that you want in, in your life and then developing that. Uh, a little bit more uh, thoroughly mm -hmm. and under, understanding uh, the vision that you want to create for yourself. And vision vision is a, uh, it can be an intimidating word for a lot of people. And I, I think some folks with the best of intentions um, think that a vision means that they have this fully produced um, feature film playing on the back of their forehead. And, you know, frankly, I don't, I don't think, uh, God reveals things to us that way. However, what I do know from my own experience is that we do see glimpses, uh, sneak peeks, and little previews yeah. of, of things that are possible in our life. We see them when we're waiting at a traffic light. We, we see them when we're getting dressed. We see them when we're waiting for the kids to come out of school or for so-and-so to come out of the grocery store. We, we see these things. And sometimes... Lorna, when we see little previews over and over again, kind of just pop up in our in our head, not a not as a fully full length feature film, but maybe for a split second or for a second. Well, then we can take that and develop it, and that's one of the things that that I like to help people do is to develop that image into a picture, and then let's develop that picture into a plan. And then let's develop that plan into a process. Yeah. Wow. And that's, wow, that's, that's so great. Uh, and, and you do mention a lot of that actually in your book, Finding Your Voice. So uh, yes, thank you. for, for people that are listening, just really uh, you can find it on Amazon. Uh, I know that's where I got it. I just, I love that book. I'm reading it over again <laughs> because it's been so helpful. So, uh, so many great tips there. Uh, well, thank thank you so much for for uh, reading the book, and yeah, we've had a lot of fun with it, and uh, it's uh, it's done well for us. Yes, oh, it's just awesome. So, 
uh, sort of on that topic, would you would you just talk about some new projects or books or new, uh, you know, speaking engagements that you have going on that listeners should be aware of? Sure. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, things are um, exciting for us these days. Just uh, two days ago, I signed my second uh, agreement with um, uh, representation as a speaker with a speakers bureau at a b- booking agency. So that's exciting. Speaking is uh, going really well for us. We've I've already done uh, quite a bit this this year, uh, relatively speaking, and I still have a couple things left for this uh, for the re- the remainder of the year. And so I'm excited about that. While we were speaking just a few mu- minutes ago, my um, one of my uh, the, the talent management team uh, just sent me an email, and so that's that's exciting. Back and forth communication, but do, do a lot of those types of projects that I'm working on. I, I think um, speaking is one of the number one ways that you can raise awareness of your message. Yeah. So if you have a book, then, you know, develop a talk around your book. You're, you're not talking about the book, but it's a byproduct of, of your speech. So, you know, give, give a, a story or two from it. Uh, that, that's pretty much where, where my focus is uh, right, right now. Yeah. Another uh, another thing, hopefully this will be helpful for someone. You know, I've, I've got a couple of books out. Finding Your Voice is my latest one, and that's the one that's done the best for us. But when when you finish a book, from a business perspective, Lorna, that's just the beginning. Yeah. So don't think that you, unless you want to, you can do what you want. But don't think you have to jump into okay, well that book's been launched, it, it did what it did, and now I got to start on my next book. No, not necessarily. You can develop speeches, workshops, uh, seminars, retreats around one or more of the concepts of your of your book. Which, frankly, that's exactly what I'm doing with with the Finding Your Voice book. You know, the, our our focus is is on uh, building out the speaking program. So that that's what I'm doing, using that content in Finding Your Voice. I published it in 2012. Wow, but but the, but there's so much good content there, and it's done well for us. That I know that I I can continue to to use that. I don't necessarily need to. Well, okay, well, I better write another book so I have something else to to talk about. No, I'm going to use the content that I've already created, and hopefully that is, that can help someone uh, today using the content that that's already created because more is not always better. That is really uh, wise advice. That's great, Joel. I, I love hearing. I love hearing all your tips too. You know, for content uh, creators, because uh, you know you've been there and you're still there. You know, and uh, but it just really helps, right, uh, to hear your words of advice on that. Thank you. Yeah. So, would you just uh, share where people can find you online? Sure, Lorna. And again, thank you for uh, the invitation for having me. I've really appreciated this uh, time. Uh, together with you. Uh, RelaunchShow.com is the best place to go. That's where all of our podcasts are, plus all of the uh, contact information uh, about our book. Uh, free resources are on there as well. And uh, if that can add value to you, then I'd be delighted to um, do whatever I need to do to uh, to, to help you know, I think we all have a responsibility to ourselves, to society, to our family, and also to God to not only find our voice, but to also express it. Mm-hmm. Because there, there is a hungry world out there, hungry and hurting world. And, and they need hope, they need inspiration, and they need new ideas. Mm-hmm. And as authors, you have the opportunity I personally believe a responsibility to to share that with those that need to hear it. Yeah. Well, Joel, you just, uh, you know, you rocked my world. I'm just going to have to listen to this over again. But I just appreciate you just taking the time out of your busy schedule to just share with us. Thanks so much. A oh, pleasure is mine. Uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you for uh, the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks, Joel.